Hi everyone. Happy weekend. Thank you for spending a little time with me today and um, listening to me natter on about my knitting and my and my spinning. Oh my goodness, I've been spinning. Can't wait to share with you what I've been spinning. Um, but first I just want to talk about um, my knitting whips and my cat. Of course, on cue, I start recording and he goes crazy. So you'll hear little kitty noises. Um, I do have the windows open, but it's, it's quite, it's very quiet outside today. It's so gorgeous. It is an early spring day here. We have not transitioned fully over into summer yet, but I think that is right around the corner. Next week is going to be quite chilly. Um, and I don't, you know, I know a lot of us podcasters or a lot of us YouTubers talk about the weather, but I just think clothing and dress and what, what you wear is tightly linked with what the weather is. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm going to be unapologetic about talking about the weather. <laughs> However, this is a knitting fiber spinning crafty sometimes I, i'm like very likely to start sewing any day now um sewing again any day um i do have my plans for kilt making so that is on my mind and uh but right now my newest and latest thing to do is spinning <laughs> I hope you've been well. I hope you've had you've had a very fulfilling and crafty couple of weeks since the last time I podcasted. I know I have, though I have no finished objects. And because it's so warm, I just threw a shawl over my shoulders just because I, I really cranked open the windows. So there's a, a really beautiful breeze coming through the rooms here, my rooms and my apartment. So instead, I'm going to, um, because I have no finished objects, I'm going to jump right into whips. And I'm going to start with what Martha's wearing. And I can see my my view of what you're seeing is right over there, <laughs> right to my left. Um, and I can see that um, Miss Martha, my mannequin, is not 100% on screen. Um, maybe rather than moving her, I'll move the camera just a tad. There you go, now you can really see her. Um, she needs to move back so you can get the rest of her in there. Yeah, there you go. So I have been working on this gorgeous little cardigan. This is a, um, I was inspired from working on the Elton cardigan by Hohi Locatelli and uh, the combination of mohair and a fingering weight uh, wool or a fingering weight yarn like making them combo up together and I thought that um, I thought that this is this I wanted to make a very spring summer wearable cardigan for my um, you know for for me to wear in my office and, and you know and if you if you like it you may want to emulate it and perhaps purchase the pattern and also make it so um, so I'm embarking on a couple different mohair um, fingering weight yarn combos. And yeah, this is my first attempt here. I'm so happy with it so far. I am, I'm working on the sleeves, which I'll talk to you about in a second. There's a little um, thing hanging here, which might be a little confusing, but yeah. So actually, let me, should I, should I take the sweater off? Yeah. I, rather than move the camera, let me take it off of her so you can see it better. Okay, so this little cardigan is a drop shoulder. It's knit top down all in one piece. It has this beautiful lace panel yoke on top. Um, so that, as you saw on, on the mannequin on Martha, it was hitting about here. Um, and then it's the seam on the back. So when you're doing your short rows, those are all in stockinette, just plain stockinette. And then once the short rows are complete, you're doing this gorgeous little lace 
um, stitch right here so you can see it so it's gonna be transparent so I think it'll be really cool really nice for summer and spring wearing um, just like if you want an extra layer because of chilly air conditioning or breezy cool nights depending on your climate and where you live um, that was my my thoughts on this and I um, I went ahead and added a ribbed button panel so you can see that here I won't put my buttons on the front until I block the cardigan because the um, the button bands the knitting like all knitting will shift around and I don't want to have buttons I don't want to have like weird stretching going on so I'll wait till I block um, I wet block the the lace panel is uh, or the lace stitches is, is copied again down here right around light right on the front um, I know it's not you can't see that so well right on the front and then there's another piece another little section of lace on the side right here on that so those will be like right right at the the side hip um, and last the sleeves the sleeves are gonna be really cool I think um, so I am in working on the sleeves the sleeve stitches are on on the needle it will be long sleeve so it will go to the to the wrist bone however um, if you choose to buy and make the pattern you could do any sleeve length you want um, I contemplated doing no sleeves but I just had this really interesting idea for sleeves so you can see I have this strip right here of a um, repeating the lace pattern and what I'm going to do is knit this to about 12 inches 12 to no 10 10 to 12 not more than 12 inches long from the drop shoulder now the drop shoulder will the piece actually here let me show you the piece goes on me there you go oh my goodness this mohair I am not <laughs> a huge fan of knitting mohair I have to say okay there you go so you can see like the drop shoulder I might get a little bit more up there we go there okay now you can really see how it looks. So you can see the transparency of the mohair lace. And what I'm doing is knitting this panel down to, it. it's, here's my elbow crease right here. Um, so I'm gonna knit down a few more inches till about here, till about bracelet length with this. Um, and then what I will do is go back with the fingering weight wool and yarn and I will complete the sleeve so the sleeve for um, this part is knit you're knitting back and forth you can see here I have 14 stitches on the needle so I'm knitting back and forth in 14 stitches until I reach a particular length then those stitches will go on hold and I will go back up and pick up around the rest of the armhole I'll be picking up with the uh, main color yarn here and be knitting in the round well, not in the round really. It'll, I'll be knitting back and forth from one side of this lace panel to the other all the way down um, till I get to the same like, you know, about bracelet length. And then I'll be doing a cuff that will be just in mohair. Um, it's going to be really cool. Um, this is going to be a very romantic sort of vibe to it this um, this sweater and I have one last surprise of what I'm planning to do with the sweater that I don't want to talk about right now because I don't want to give everything away but um, when I have the sweater done which I anticipate having it done by my next podcast in two weeks um, I will share everything with you then if you are interested in test knitting, I have the pattern pretty much ready for test knitters. So please get in touch with me. Just um, DM me here or on Instagram um, or via email or on Ravelry, any which way you want. Just get in touch with me. Um, I think the sweater will be, I don't have my, my notes, but I'm planning to size it out quite big. Um, this, this one has like four to six, inches of ease and I'm so I'm knitting about a 44 to 46 
inch um, bust. I, um, of course, like you don't really see all that ease right now because the um, yarn will, it is a super wash fingering weight, so it will relax a bit. Um, I don't think the mohair really grows very much, but lace grows, so I expect a little bit of growth. Like, I think what you can see, maybe you don't see it so much in this. Um, on the camera, but hanging certainly you can see like there's um, a lot of ease between the lace and the superwash down here. So I think all of that will even out in the blocking. And I think this will be really interesting. I hope you followed me while I was explaining the way that I was going to knit the sleeve. So after I'm done knit knitting this panel, I've got about, I don't know, six or seven more repeats of the lace to go. Um, then I will be picking up um, here around the armhole with the um, fingering weight and knitting back and forth, picking up stitches along the panel. That was the only way I could figure out how you would see through the lace. So yeah. I'm very, very excited about this new pattern. Um, and I'm tr I'm pushing hard to get it out. Um, you actually, if you decide you want to test knit or if you think you want to test knit this, all you need is two skeins of a fingering weight. You probably just really need a skein and a half. Um, or, you know, if you're, on, even if you're in the larger end of the size range, I don't think you'll need more than two skeins of the fingering weight yarn because I've used about one no yes yes just about one skein for this part um, and then I need a little bit more for the sleeves and then I'm done um, so I'll, I, I would say for the size that I'm doing which is around a 44 to 46 that is about a skein and maybe a third so even if you go up a few size ranges you still should be okay with two skeins so two skeins like about 400 yards or, or 360 meters a fingering weight with one skein of mohair, one skein of mohair should be fine. If you have that on hand and you wanna, or even if you wanna order it and go ahead and make a version of this, um, yeah, hit me up and, uh, cause I am looking for test knitters. I'm planning to do a fast test knit um, and editing, tech editing, all of that should go really, really quickly. And I'm hoping to get this out and in the marketplace by the end of, um, by like mid-June. Mid-June would be awesome so that people can still take advantage and knit it. It's a pretty fast knit. Um, knitting the mohair really sucks. I'm not gonna lie. Like, oh my goodness. Wow. Um, mohair, it's slow. It's slippery. It's a slippery yarn so you end up knitting a little slower. If you're, I'm a very fast knitter with just straight up regular wool. I don't have to look at my hands but with mohair I'm looking at my hands frequently, more frequently, I don't feel comfortable just going along, and especially when it's got this lace detail um, that you're seeing here. Let me put this back on Martha. So she is showing you the beauty of this garment. Um, with the mohair, I think once this is blocked and and all that, I, I believe the length, if you're curious, I think it's gonna be around 25 inches from up here, 24 or so, 20, 24, 25, just depending, I'm not sure how much stretch I'm gonna get. So if you figure this T-shirt is around 30 inches, um, so she's, no, it's probably like 28 inches. So it's right now, it's probably right around 24. I'll probably get a little bit of ease. It's from the armhole, and remember it's a very dropped armhole to the bottom edge. It is, uh, I want you to just see that detail there. So that's the detail. That's the detail, isn't it pretty? Um, yeah, from here, from about here down to the edge, it's 14 inches, as opposed to the cardigan that I made, the Elton cardigan out of cat sandwich fibers, that was 13 inches. So this is an inch longer and then I should get some some relaxation of the yarn when I uh, block it. I feel like I'm rambling. Am I rambling? Let me tell you about the yarn. The mohair is just what most indie dyer mohair, um, indie dyers are dying in terms of the mohair silk blend. Um, this particular one is right here. It is a very 
neutral, natural, off-white color. It is from Legacy Fiber Arts. And it is called this fingering weight yarn that I'm using is very special. <laughs> but I mean, though it's special, you should have no problem finding something very similar or close to this. Um, it is this yarn. I, I love that I'm using this yarn from Arizona for a uh, spring summer weight cardigan. Um, the yarn brand is Desert Bloom Yarn, so hand dyed in Arizona. It's an indie dyed company. The color is called Prickly Pear. And this is one of the Tits Out Collective yarn. If you don't know what the Tits Out Collective is, it was a fundraising project spearheaded by Countess Ablaze in the UK. And it was a global initiative to raise money for charity. Um, and it, she had a long, comp, um, not complicated, but very actually very interesting story that I'm not going to share here, but you're welcome to go to Countess Blaze to her website. I'm sure you could find a blog. It, it happened right around last year, right around the same time of year. It was like June, July, um, that a bunch of indie dyers did uh, Tits Out Collective, and it was all to raise money for for charity and because this is funny enough because this was called prickly pear so prickly pear p-e-a-r is an actual fruit um, that is raised in the desert she called this she played on played took a play on that and called it prickly pear like as in two I thought I should buy two skeins and I'm so glad I did because I wouldn't have been able to make this without um, without the, the two skeins. Um, so I did have two skeins of this. I ended up in this part, I alternated skeins. So I was down to about 55 grams. So it's a hundred grams gain. Uh, um, oh, and this, and this yarn is a 75% merino, superwash merino, 25% silk. So it's got really nice drape though. I think for this pattern, you'd be fine with just a superwash, fingering weight, indie dyed yarn or not. Um, even non um, indie dyed yarn would be fine. It would really work well. I don't necessarily think it has to have the silk in it though. That was a nice extra plus. So I think I'm gonna end up with an extra half a skein. Um, yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. Um, Desert Bloom yarn, her yarn, the characteristic speckle that you're seeing here is in many of her colors. So if you, I, I took a quick peek at her website before I decided to podcast today just to um, kind of take a gauge. I wanted to know what the stakes were in terms of if I'm telling you I've used this, I'm using this yarn in a new design, I wanted to know would you be able to find something similar? And certainly Desert Bloom Yarns has very similar, not this color necessarily, but similar in terms of the speckling and the and the way that the yarn knits up. And certainly this blend, if you decide you really want this blend. I don't remember it being all that expensive. Um, of course it was for charity. Maybe it was typical fingering weight price. It wasn't ridiculous. It was somewhere in that 28 to 32 range. I'm drinking tea. Um, David's tea. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you something really sad. I don't know how it, how I managed it, but yesterday I dropped my sheep mug, the one that I got from Edinburgh yarn festival. I dropped it and it shattered. It must've had, I didn't even drop it that far. I dropped it about two feet, um, from my end table over by my couch over there and it hit the ground. I, I don't, it's a mystery to me. Like, I, don't, I think I must have put the glass not fully on the table and it fell, but it was in a million pieces. So I think it maybe had a crack. I, I mean, I don't know if I cracked it or if it, if I bought it cracked. I don't think I bought it cracked. I may have cracked. I may have, it just, I don't know. Anyway, super sad because that little sheep mug was so cute. It was hand built. It was hand, a hand slab build. It wasn't built on a wheel. This is um, from a potter's wheel. And I just loved it. So you know what I did this morning? I went online 
I went on Etsy and I looked at sheet mugs, hand, handmade sheet mugs. <laughs> and I ended up buying like four mugs, not two sheet mugs and two non sheet mugs, which I'll, I'll show you when I get them. But yeah, so I'm so sad about that. But you know, what does one do? I couldn't get that exact potter's um, uh, mugs because her, at least when I looked at her website, it didn't seem like there was anything to buy. Oh, all right. I thought this would be quick because I don't have much to share, um, but I, you know, I'm rambling, rambling. Um, okay. What also got work, so obviously I worked a lot on this because I think last time I showed it to you, I had I had not included the second color here, so it's really moved. Um, and I anticipate, I, you know, if tomorrow wasn't Mother's Day, oh, happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Happy Mother's Day. Um, and grandmas and, you know, maybe you didn't give birth to them, but you're still their mom. You too, you especially, you especially. Um, Anyway, I, if it weren't Mother's Day tomorrow, I would probably finish this this weekend. But because it's Mother's Day, I have plans. Um, going to a yarn, no, scratch yarn. I'm going to an art exhibit, um, a performative art exhibit that uh, I'm very excited about in New York City. And then having brunch with the boys, my three adult sons who all live and work in New York City. Um, yeah, should be quite fun. And I think I'm seeing one significant other <laughs> in that mix. Um, so I'm excited. I had, haven't seen three boys together since uh, my birthday in February. So that'll be really, really, really fun. My next whip, which got lots of attention. However, it's a slow knit because it's a big, it's a, it's a fuck ton of stitches. <laughs> of color work <laughs> but wow I am loving it so next time you're gonna see this on Martha um, so this is the Papa sweater by wow why did the name just go out of my I can I remember the first the last name but not the not the first name it is by a Japanese yarn um, yarn I have yarn on the mind <laughs> a Japanese sweater designer. It's called the Papa Sweater by Junko Okomoto. Moto Okomoto. That's what it looks like. It's a very. It's called Papa because it is supposed to be a very loose, baggy sweater, as if you borrowed it from your dad, from your papa. Um, but I don't know. My father wouldn't have worn flowers, but I love that there's flowers. <laughs> So I am probably, oh, I just lost a bunch of stitches, but it's a rustic wool, not rustic, but it's got tooth to it. So I didn't, they didn't move. I'm going to try not to drop some more. Um, yeah, so it's this, I'm probably about, I think I'm about six or seven rows from finishing the chart, but look how pretty it is. I love how I, I'm using the, the, um, yarn one of the yarns is spin cycle and I love how the grady the spin cycle yarn is gradiating in the color work this I'm actually still on the same skein I'm using the dream state which is the worsted weight this is a DK weight or worsted weight sweater I'm using my base the dark blue that you're seeing is a, is a DK weight at least from from it's Harrisville designs nightshades which I'll, I'll talk to you more about in a second but this pattern is written for oh it's written for a verb for keeping warm yarn which who knows pioneer which I, I i don't know whether that's dk or or worsted wait i think it might be a considered a worsted but you know if it's a non-commercial yarn it's not gonna it's not gonna work out it's not gonna work out <laughs> I got gauge though. I had to go down. Um, it's written for size needle size five, and I uh, U.S. size five, three point seven five. I went down to a U.S. size four, three point five millimeter yarn, uh, or sorry, uh, needle. Um, but yeah, I I'm just loving it. I'm loving the flowers. I think this is going to be awesome. Um, it does have a really massive chest. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna be swimming in it, so it will look like I either borrowed it from my boyfriend or I borrowed it from my father. 
I think my boyfriend would wear flowers. Maybe he could borrow this. I'll have to see. I don't think he's seen this. I don't think he's really paid attention to, um, he's more about like whatever I have. I haven't brought this out when we go out because I do bring knitting out with me, but I always bring like very easy mindless knitting when we go out together. Um, and this is complicated. Sit on the couch and concentrate and listen to a, a show that I'm not, um, that does not have subtitles type of knitting. <laughs> So which is why it's taking me a good long while to to get further on it But again like tonight if I don't work on this I could get through I think those last few rows pretty easily like watch a good movie for a couple hours and get through those rows and Then I'll be on to the mindless part. So then so then he'll see this because it'll be mindless and Yeah Yeah, I'm not sure he'd wear this maybe on the golf course maybe because golfers wear weird things have you ever noticed? All right, let me talk to you about the yarn. The um, main color is this gorgeous midnight blue yarn from Harrisville Design Company. This is part of the Nightshades yarn. It is a Cormo, 80% Cormo, 20% American wool blend. And I think the way it works is that the Cormo is black and then the color is that 20 percent um because all if you look at if you go to harrisville designs website and look at the nightshades collection and i think it's about 12 or 15 colors they're all black based with hits of color so the difference between the yarns is quite the color difference between the yarns is quite small um, all right, so that is that one. This is all I have left of the <laughs> one skein of the Dream State. But here is a fresh skein of Dream State. So this is this is the colorway Deep Bump. So you can see like one of the, the miracles of Spin Cycle yarn. Um, so this is Spin Cycle. Spin Cycle yarn, Dream State. One of the miracles of it is that when you cake it, it, it gradiates. It's like a natural gradient. Um, so that's really cool. And that is how I end up with this gradient color band. I think you can see it there, like from, especially here in this section where there's a lot of dense stitches. So you can see how it's deeper colored blue here in the center. Oh, cat, kitty cat, kitty cat. Um, and it's like more golden up here and then it's going back to the golden color down here. I think with, when I attach this second skein, I'm gonna attach it from the outside because I think it's gonna go better from, you know, I'm gonna really get another few handful of rows that are gonna be golden and I think that'll really look nice um, in, this, in this sweater. So yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have about 17 or 18 inches of positive ease in this but um as i said last time i think it's you know it's it's good to have things that fit you slightly differently just because like does everything have to be exactly the same it shouldn't be variety i like variety so i am loving this knit i um am so happy to be knitting a junko okamato moto um, sweater just because I always learn something when I try to knit a different designers pattern and um, yeah I've already learned a few things there's a lot of short rows in the pattern a lot of short rows she short rows in a lot of different places and uh, that's really fun yeah and last I have made very little progress because this is my only mindless knit at the moment um so i reserve knitting on this sweater um when i'm out in my at when I, I it's been my take it to work and knit and meeting sweater and things like that so i until i get another mindless knit on the needles i am reluctant to move too quickly because i do not want to um lose having a mindless knit but this is the this is my as if tee. So I've knit quite a bit actually. I've pro I think I've knit about two inches. I think it was about this far down before. Um, I am excited. This is a wear now pattern. So um, I am excited to get this completed. Um, I probably already put a picture on the screen, but if you're wondering what it looks like, this is a 
um, worsted weight and mohair. So you can see like it has an illusion neckline there um, in mohair. So I have more mohair I'm knitting. <laughs> no. Um, I actually think st plain stockinette mohair is fine to knit with. So this is the color that I am putting. Pair These are the pairing, the color pairing I'm doing. This is a neighborhood fiber company. This is a, a different blend. It's set of, instead of 72-28 blend, it's a 60-40 blend. So it's really soft. The yardage is a little less, but the price is also less um, than what you would pay for the 72-28 blends. Um, and this beautiful worsted weight yarn that I'm using is from Fiber for the People. It is her non-superwash base, which I'm super excited about. So this Fiber for the People is a Nevada-based, U.S. Nevada-based um, indie dyer. And uh, the color is called Kick Drum. I don't really think you can read it too well there, but Kick Drum. I'll help put it on screen. 100% non superwash merino worsted weight. And um, yeah, I am making the pattern longer than recommended because, I mean, I think I'm already what the pattern recommends, but this is, so this is eight inches. That's what, I think that's what the pattern recommends. And if it, if that were at my armpit, that would just get to my bra, bottom of my bra band is, is right there. <laughs> so it wouldn't even color cover my bra very well so I'm knitting another uh, about four inches I'm gonna go for 12 inches and then see how it looks on the dress form on Martha if Martha can pull it off I'll be able to pull it off because we are the same size and I am doing this for the crop it cowl with Asylum Fibers. Though I just saw, if you're a, um, an Instagram follower, I just saw that um, Starlight Knitting Society over in Portland, Oregon is also running a crop cowl, crop sweater um, cowl. I have a couple other crop sweaters that I'm interested in, but crop for me, it's got to hit the top of my pants. Like it's, And it's got to give me a little room so that if I move or you know lift my arm up or bend a little bit or sit down that it's not I'm not exposing any skin because I did that I did that trend the last time it was popular about 20 years ago and I was much younger and it didn't looking back it didn't look that great on on any of us <laughs> showing skin I mean I'm looking for what I did with my tea I don't know what oh here it is it over there um yeah so those are my three things that i've been working on mostly and other than that i have been working on spinning so i i gave you a little preview of my spinning wheel i might have to move martha out of the way a little bit move her back um because i have my spinning wheel here um, so I bought, I bought a spinning wheel. So I went and took three weeks ago. Was it three, three weeks ago? Yeah, I think it was three weeks ago. I bought a, I went and took a class with Alex Creates and I learned how to spin using a drop spindle. I learned the real, you know, basics of it. I mean, he's super skillful and I really enjoyed, um, here it is. I really enjoyed learning from him. But of course, like how much can you learn in an hour and a half class? You really don't learn everything. And what I figured out from doing the drop spindle is that that coordination between like making the spindle spin and then drafting the fiber, it was really difficult for me to try to work that out. And I thought um, one of the other girls in the class, one of the other women in the class was very skillful. Like she had practiced drop spindling before she took his class and she was interested in buying a spinning wheel so she was talking to him a little bit about that and I just sat and listened and it sounded like basically what he said was buy any spinning wheel you can afford don't worry too much about which one is the best or anything they all are have their own idiosyncrasies and you'll learn based on whichever one you buy so just get one like get whatever one buy what you can afford because um, spinning wheels, I think the cheapest ones that I've seen have been around four to $500 and they go all the way up to a couple grand, 2000 or so. 
with most of them averaging out around that seven to 900 range. So I went home and did a little thinking and I thought, you know, I really want a used one. I don't want to buy a brand new one. There's nothing wrong with used equipment if it's been well kept and well maintained. And I figured there had to be someone out there who had a used one. So I went on to a couple websites and I ended up on Craigslist actually and found one that was half cost. Um, it's a Kromsky, Kromsky spinning wheel. I think I have that, that brand. Um, they've been around for a couple, maybe a decade and a half. It's made in, um, made in Poland. The one that I bought is what is no, known as a castle. Let me see if I can find it. Castle um, style. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hang on. I have this one right here. I bought the Sonata. This one. Um, so it's a castle, in, meaning like the the orifice is right is above the wheel. So on um, the more traditional looking one over here, the orifice is to the side. Um, and it you know it's just a matter of like I felt like this castle style was gonna be better space wise. Um, and and like Alex said, whichever one you learn on, that's the one that's gonna feel most comfortable. Um, mine though, it's the this. This um, style, the Sonata, it is this darker wood color, the mahogany. It's made out of mahogany. It's so gorgeous. It's, and the woman that owned it, it was, um, the good thing about Kromsky's, I'm sure this is true of most spinning wheels, they are, on the bottom, it's got the signature of the workshop and it's got the date. So I, I, she, I mean, the woman I bought it from was super sweet and, I um, I learned a lot just talking to her, and I only talked to her for about maybe 15 minutes. Um, but she didn't tell me how old the, the spinning wheel is, but on the bottom it was dated 2011, so that told me what um, how old it was. And I think this company started in the early 2000s. I want to say it was like 2004 or 5, something like that. The whole story is in here about why the man that designed them decided to design them and what he started with. The Sonata is a spinning wheel that is considered portable. So it has a couple places on it. It's right over there. <laughs> I know it's just off screen. You can't see it. Um, it does have a couple hinges on it that make it foldable and it has a bag. It comes with a carrying case. So that would be the way that you could fold it up and um, take it take it with you. I wonder if that's airline, because I would not want to check this thing. Um, even, because even with, even at um, buying a used one, it was still a very dear purchase. Um, even at half price, it was pretty dear. So anyway, I came home with it uh, two weeks ago. Well, it was like a little over a week ago, about 10 days ago, and I've been spinning. I've been practicing, so I want to show you my first spin because I I think, sorry about the, the crackling and the noise, because I think, like I know for me, I wasn't really clear on um, how long it would take me to get better, and you know, exactly, it wasn't, I'm not really clear exactly what I'm doing, but this is, this is, you can see the thick thin, like I have a lot of thick thin in the, in the ball. This is beautiful BFL hand dyed fiber that I bought from a company that I don't remember. Oh wait, 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 wait. Ah, right here. It's a hundred percent. No. Um, yeah, it's a hundred percent BFL. It's a um, mixture of white and black. So there is some like black in there. I think you can see the black. Um, in the ball and then the white is dyed so I'm just trying to figure out the best lighting for it it's really beautiful yarn this is a single ply though and it's super thick it's like if I were to go ahead and ply this yarn that might because I have I have three balls about this size um, if I were to go ahead and ply it it would be really really fat it would be like super bulky yarn um, and 
what I've heard from other spinners is that it's a good idea just to hold on to your first skin uh, uh, spinning attempts just because it will inform you later um, and you you see how far you've you've come and stuff so um, anyway I forgot to tell you this is a Iowa based farm called Jakir farm um, and you can see even how much I paid it was a four ounce bat it was actually a four ounce braid um, so yeah I unbraided it and went ahead and started spinning and I I posted a picture of my yarn this yarn on uh, Instagram and what someone recommended there was that I look at Craftsy and check out their spinning classes and I ended up joining Craftsy because I could see there was a lot of spinning classes and I watched about um, five different videos on Craftsy and learned that the reason my yarn was so thick was because it was something between the tension of the of the break. I um, the Kromskys are Scotch break, so their spinning wheels are either Scotch break, Scottish break, or Irish. Um, mine's Scottish, so I had to. There's uh, you adjust the break on the um, wheel on the side. So what I learned was that. From watching the classes, was that I was holding on to the yarn too long. I wasn't letting it feed in, um, so I was getting high twist, but I and I wasn't. So the me the method is actually if you're holding the fiber in this hand. So if you're holding the fiber in this hand in your left hand and you're feeding the yarn, what I was doing was feeding the yarn like this, like in this really long draw, and you're actually supposed to do short. So you do like more like these kind of very quick, quick movements where you're so you're you're pinching, releasing, pinching, releasing, pinching, releasing and shorter. So I was pinching and then releasing. So I was taking too long. That's how I ended up with really fat and I was pinching too deep. BFL is a long fiber. Um, so I've been practicing. I brought my wheel over because I didn't. I didn't want to take it off and I'm having a really hard time reattaching if I if it breaks off or when I'm starting so I, I haven't quite learned a lot about that but my after watching the videos look at how much thinner I'm spinning isn't it awesome so you can really see the difference there um, I bought you know, it's a it's a shame to me that you bought you you're spending money on this really gorgeous gorgeous fiber, and then nothing. It's not usable because you don't know what you're doing. So I'm really pleased with this. This is um, the beginning of me spinning this big ball of fluff right here. I bought a pound and a half <laughs> of this beautiful. Here, this is a way, best way to see it, I think. This beautiful Merino and Stellina blend. You can totally see the sparkle. I'm so happy that you can see the sparkle because often with yarn, you don't see sparkle. I know I've said over and over I'm not a sparkle girl, but I think I'm a shimmer girl, and I'm hoping this is going to be shimmery. <laughs> um, but I think with this really thin draw that I've been able to... Hang on, it's, it's stuck. There we go. This really, I think you can see it. See how thin? So I think this is my single ply. So I think with this thin draw I've been able to make, I'll be able to ply this. So I'll be able to make a two ply and hopefully end up with like a sport or maybe um, DK, DK weight. Sweaters quantity of this beautiful fluff. So it's got, I don't know if, I think you can see there, it's got like a gray and this beautiful pale turquoise blend it's so pretty and it's coming out that way in the single ply too so I'm really anxious to see what this is going to end up looking like and since I bought myself a the, by the way the color is called happily ever after which is perfect for a couple reasons um it is uh because I bought myself so much, I, I wanted extra so that if I needed time to learn, I I have fiber <laughs> to learn with. 
So it's been really, really cool. I, I understand now. First of all, I want to say, sorry, mom, but you lied to me when I was a young woman. You told me that spinning takes a really long time. It doesn't. I can see now that if I were to spin every night and not knit, like when I come home from work, if I were to just sit and spin, I could spin enough yarn for a sweater in one week. I don't think it would take me very long. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do that. Like I, part of my motivation in learning how to spin was just one, mostly because I wanted to learn something new. I wanted to do something um I wanted to just understand yarn construction a little better because I don't know that I really fully get it. Like I know it in theory, but actually building yarn yourself from fiber is really interesting. I would love to learn how to card, though the drum carters, they're so expensive. They're another 800 or thousand dollars a piece. So that'll be a while away. I'm not going to rush to do that. I, I don't want to buy a whole bunch of equipment and then feel obligated to try all these new things. So I'm just gonna, you know, I'm putting a toe in, I'm putting a second toe in and just kind of, you know, seeing where it takes me. Um, and I do really, really love knitting. I mean, spinning is a different sort of meditative, but I do, I mean, maybe people get so good that they don't have to look. I can't imagine, but, um, cause now I'm looking, I guess this is how new knitters feel. You, you, you can't imagine not having to look at your needles. But it happens after a while. You don't have to look at your needles. But um, I can't imagine spinning and not having to watch my hands. So I could see how like an audio book would be really appealing because you get the story. Um, but there's it's all the pictures are in your head. There's not this you know it's not necessary to look at anything else. So um, but yeah, I'm I'm really really enjoying it. It's so so far so good, and I am looking forward to spinning my my big chunk of fiber and I, I realize that I haven't said where the fibers from I don't remember the labeling is you know not clear <laughs> so I can't readily show you where it's from but I'll, I'll pop I will have popped it on screen by now I think um, it's a local oh I think it's called blue alpaca farms and I it's in um, Pennsylvania so it's not too far from me and she had a bunch of this color I love it. I can see how spinning a multicolored bat would be really fun. So I imagine my Rhinebeck this year is going to be fiber centric. <laughs> um, but like I said, I also do like knitting yarn. I, I don't think I'm going to get to the point where I only want to knit what I spin, but, but who knows. Um, I'm also hoping to catch the wave of Grace from Babel's Traveling Yarn and Mina Phillips from Knitting x -Pack. They are doing a spin make-along. Um, I think it's an S-M-A-L. Um, I'll put their info in my show notes as well as on screen. So if you're interested in looking at it more, I may know more about it next time because I just really haven't done my due diligence to see what it is they're doing. But it, I think the idea is that you spin with purpose and I am definitely a with purpose type of person. So, um, I, that's why I bought so much of this, of this fiber because I, I know myself, I'm not content to make a hat, like just spin a little bit and make a hat. I want to make a sweater. So I don't even know what sweater I'm going to make. I'm going to have to see how it, how thick this um, fiber ends up spinning and what I end up with. And then I'll determine it from there. But I'm so happy and excited that I'm becoming a spinster. Yay. Yay for spinsters. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I really appreciate your time and your views. And I um, enjoyed reading comments. I read every one. Um, so I enjoyed reading all the comments on my last video, which was rather controversial about design pricing. And uh, I look forward to reading your comments on this one too. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye.